In this video, I'll be looking at my second review of a FreeBSD-based OS in 2021. This time it's GhostBSD 21.01.15. As I was making this video, version 21.01.20 was released, which fixes an issue with the hostname not being carried over to the rc.conf after installation. Even though the version name had changed to reflect this bug fix, the contents is otherwise not affected. Right, on the usual test machine, we're just going to boot up, and on screen is the Summary of the uh, specs. Right, this is uh, a new release for Ghost BSD for 2021. And we're going to see um, what it's like. Of course, things outwardly don't seem to have changed, but there's a lot, been a lot of changes underneath. Some things which I agree with, some things which I don't. And we're just going to find the language and then the keyboard. You've probably seen me do this dozens of times already, but stick with me for a little while. There's the continent, Europe, and look for London time zone. Right, this is the first change. You can have a full disk configuration or custom. What's been changed is the ability to uh, have UFS. You can still put UFS if you go for a custom install. The full disk configuration uh, is for ZFS. Um, I kind of a little bit sad for that, but I understand why they did that. Uh, but in this case, I had quite a difficult time in installing this version of GhostBSD on my test machine because I would choose full disk configuration and it would meet an error where it wouldn't proceed any further. Once the install started, it would just get into a display message called clean up at the bottom there and it would just be stuck. So it took me a while, but I worked out that if I went into custom, uh, selected the right disk, of course, and then unchecked force 4K. I don't know if this one's essential, but I did it anyway. And also clicked pull name. Uh, I'll leave that there as it is. Uh, otherwise, so unselecting that and selecting that allowed me to proceed. And the installation took. So we'll just speed through the install process. Now I've just got that out of the way. The install process itself is still as easy as ever. I'm just going to fast forward this. And one thing, pretty cool. See that G is glowing. I never noticed that before. Speed it up, you actually notice it quite a lot. Right, we're on to uh, the final stretch. It's going to reboot into the newly installed Ghost PSD. been a lot of changes in this particular version. Uh, they removed the slide from the GBI install, uh, fix restriction related to the next button in partition, update the supported video drivers, remove support for full UFS, which I've already mentioned, support from the installer, which, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a shame. Remove Ghost PST common setting package, as it's not needed anymore. Software station has uh, received a little update. They remove policy kit setting for the ISO to HD. Remove fixed perms from ISO to HD. Remove purge live settings. Add missing setup for Steam in GhostBSD build and PC sysinstall. Remove VirtualBox edition as default. I don't use VirtualBox anymore, but I uh, don't know how that would affect people using this. Move refind out of GhostBSD build. Hmm. Change GhostBSD setup path to refind config. Change the PC sysinstall to set both refined and ghost bsd efi but default to refined if the refined is chosen update pc sys install to use the new path of refined make sure that the host name is set create ghost bsd refine ports and remove LibreOffice as default packages which is uh, another thing which i think is a little bit sad because one thing which i think i mean it's no big deal you can easily install it but one thing i think which ghost bsd had going for it was an out of the box office suite. Now I know they did it for space wise to make sure that ZFS and it all fit within four gigabytes of RAM. Cause I think previously the the default amount was uh, six gigabytes. But I feel that maybe perhaps a lighter word processor could have been put in. And, and it is a shame, I think. I mean, you know, it's the developers, uh, they can do what they want with the with the OS of course. And like I say, it's no big deal. Um, 
to do this. Perhaps um, going how a low OS or how a low system does it. Maybe a place marker, um, LibreOffice link could be there. So you click on LibreOffice and it says, you know, it starts to install. So maybe something like that. I don't know. It's just a shame. So these were the next. We're going to get pull requests uh, open and merged. And uh, I did a patch for org.freedesktop.consolekit.policy to fix shutdown and updated network card status message. And from the release notes of 21.01.20, and it really was just a bug fix release. But in this case, it was host name missing from rc.conf after installation. And there on the screen, it shows how to manually fix the issue without reinstalling. So if you've installed this version that I'm reviewing, then at the bottom there, if you just follow that, it'll fix it for you. Right, so we're now booting into the newly installed system. And GhostBSD tends not to change a great deal, uh, apart from this particular release. And if we look on the screen before we log in, you can see you've got an accessibility options. Keyboard layout. Time. And power, suspend, hibernate, etc. So that's always as it's been, now we just log in. And the desktop uh, will default to a very nice uh, implementation of Mate. And at the top, you've got the menus as per usual. Nothing different there. If you click on them, I'm not going to read out every single entry, but it'll just, uh, we'll just show you what you get. And there's the volume. Ethernet or Wi-Fi if you're using that. Calendar and clock. You've got applications. You've got accessories. Graphics. Internet. Firefox by default, which is nice. Office minus LibreOffice, of course. Programming. Sound and video. And system tools. And then we've got places. And the system itself. So you've got your preference, administration, control center, and various uh, knickknacks. Right, let's have a look at... Uh, yeah, we'll have a look at the system monitor. Give you an idea of what it's using uh, as soon as we boot in. 618. Now, it's a little bit deceptive, but... And I'll just bring up top so you can see uh, memory usage that way. And as you can tell, we're using... Uh, ZFS, but even even that uh, is not it's not chewing up a lot of memory. And there we are, it's on FreeBSD 12.2 stable, and Mate 1.24.1, and it's not too bad. It's running nicely. This is an old machine, but it runs very nicely on this. And there's the directory structure. For those who are interested, uh, we'll have a look at the available wallpapers. There's not a great deal. But it's easy to find uh, some on the internet. And there's the themes, some uh, Vimix, and how to adjust the fonts. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, make these a little bit larger for my tired old eyes. There we go. The home folder uh, offers no surprises. And the computer part just shows you what's available in drives. Right, we'll have a look at the control center. Nothing really changed here. We've got the usual settings. To update the installation, it just simply go to update station. And it'll show you what's available. In this case, there's only a couple, which is not too bad. Uh, it will make an automatic backup, just in case things go wrong, which is uh, really nice. That's a nice little feature. And here we go. And that was it. So, install's not too bad. We'll look for software station. And this is um, showing you, really, the ones that are already ticked, the ones that are already installed. But this is um, it's a nice little software installer. It's, it's a bit like Synaptic. So we're going to look for 
a few. We're going to look for Linus. Which I'm not going to test in this particular video. I'll leave that for a different one. We're going to install LibreOffice. We're going to install OBS. Okay, there's some nice, um, nice little plugins there. That's interesting. So we're going to install e um, OBS. Next, Kdon Live. Yes, I know this is a, a Mate based one and it will pull in a lot of KDE uh, packages, but KD, uh, Kdon Live is in a must have. And Inkscape, of course. And we're going to try Steam. Like I say, I'm not going to go into details in this video, but if I install them now, I can I can use them later. And I would like to use Steam on GhostBSD after the developer showed a nice little um, Counter-Strike demo going on. Right, having fast forward all that, we'll finish. And go to the menu, and it auto-populates the, the additions that we've put in uh, nicely. There's LibreOffice. Right, okay. One thing which somebody asked me to see if was available for GhostBSD is a nice little developer package called VS Code. So I just want to show people that you can get it on GhostBSD. Start it up. There it is. There we go. Very nice indeed. So we have all the cool toys as well. Very nice. We'll see the version for those who may want to know. And version 1.46.1. Now I have no idea if that's out of date or the latest. Uh, presumably it's one of the latest ones. And that's that. This wasn't an in-depth uh, review. Uh, I feel like uh, I've done quite a few Ghost PSD uh, reviews lately. And there tends to be very little change in between them. This one perhaps is slightly different in the sense that there's quite a big change behind the scenes. Uh, some of the default packages, are, of course, have been removed. And some have been added. And apart from the... Now, I don't know whether it was to do with uh, my particular setup or the fact that my test machine gets lots of different uh, FreeBSD-based stuff installed on it. ZFS running, UFS, so maybe that interfered with it. But for me... Um, I don't know which one it was. It was either disabling the, the Force 4K or it was actually ticking the uh, the name for the, the uh, pool. But it fixed the problem. Which, now, I, if someone else came across that, it may be that that might be a deal breaker for them. So, yeah, I might be just unlucky on that. But apart from that, well, it's a solid release. Uh, as they all are, really, from GhostBSD. Um, and in fact, GhostBSD is the OS of choice for my children's computers. I At the moment, they're all homeschooling, which is an interesting experience. And there's six computers, all running GhostBSD. And they're running... Uh, <laughs> three of them are using um, Google Classroom, and the other three are using Microsoft Teams, um, which is done through the browser. And GhostBSD manages it quite well, so I'm quite pleased by that. And the reason why I use GhostBSD is, rather than FreeBSD, I mean, given more time, I would have installed FreeBSD and set that up. But I needed computers in a, in a hurry. I needed something quick. I needed something with um, a fully working desktop uh, very, very speedily. And I needed something with a word processor. And that's one of the things which saddens me, the fact that they've taken LibreOffice out. Now, it's not a slight on the OS. It doesn't affect the OS at all. But it just means you have to install it separately and kind of for me, uh, speak for me, that out of the box experience is kind of a little bit diminished now. And it was one of the things which I liked. But you know, maybe maybe in the future it'll be reinstated or something uh, more of a lightweight solution will be put in. But anyway, yes, uh, this is not an in-depth review. I'll have a look at perhaps uh, Linus and Steam running on GhostBSD uh, in, for a few videos in the future. But for now, uh, this is a quick look at GhostBSD 21.01.15, which which is already replaced by the time I'd already uh, finished the video. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.